From Los Angeles to the Inland Empire, this is IE Live with Rachel Vendetti and Ray Petlin. The Rocketry Organization of California held its semi-annual rocket sports launch at Lucerne Dry Lake Bed this weekend. The three-day event featured over 400 rockets from a few inches long to 10 feet high. They soared over 10,000 feet into the sky and parachuted for at least, well, at least most of them did, to a safe landing. Because of the altitude clearance from the FAA was a requirement, and occasionally one of them would manage to punch through the sound barrier, creating a sonic boom. It starts with uh, a lot of little Cub Scouts with little tiny rockets, and as we grow older and make more money, we move on to bigger rockets, which are a little more complex. We make our own. We come out to these launches in different locations around the United States and, um, you know, just have a good time, see if they really work. The regular sports launches are held the second Saturday of each month throughout the year. The San Bernardino County Fair kicked off Friday, celebrating 60 years of fun. There are a variety of activities for people of all ages, from a petting zoo to sea lions and livestock. And it wouldn't be a fair without the merry-go-round and all the other thrill-seeking rides. A large variety of food is also available to satisfy every appetite. To check out the daily entertainment, go to www.sbcfair.com. I'm Stella Montoya with IE Live. Well, the NTSB is looking into the cause of a small plane crash in Upland Monday that sent three people to the hospital with minor injuries and caused damage to a couple homes. The twin-engine Piper Seneca was attempting to land at Cable Airport when the pilot reported engine trouble. The plane struck the roof of two houses before coming to a stop on a third. The three people on board the plane were all transported to local hospitals. No one on the ground was injured. Firefighters were standing by as the plane was removed from the roof of the house because the concern of the fuel spilled in the crash. Sergeant Clayton Dunn of Moreno Valley was laid to rest Monday at Riverside National Cemetery. Dunn and two other soldiers died on May 26th when an IED exploded near their vehicle in Iraq. Dunn is survived by his wife and three-month-old daughter, his father, mother, and brother. Dunn has been posthumously awarded the Bronze Star, a Purple Heart, and a Good Conduct Medal, all of which were presented to his widow. He was uh, an excellent leader, always put his men before him, uh, always led the way, and uh, you know, always set the example for his men to follow. He's going to be missed by a lot of people. Flags were flown at half-mast at the Capitol in honor of Sergeant Dunn. He is the 75th Iraq War casualty to be laid to rest at Riverside National Cemetery. A one-day multicultural celebration brought Victorville residents together the past weekend. There was dancing in the street at the annual Spice of Life celebration in Old Town Victorville. Vendors of all types were on hand offering a variety of goods and services. Of course, there was food, lots of food for every taste. Entertainment featuring bands like Fat Cat Swingers and dance acts like Shenanigans wowed the crowds. Native American dances were crowd pleasers and a number of vintage cars were enjoyed by the car buffs. Well, there were many animals from hermit, crags to a, to hermit crabs to a gecko to cats and dogs, even a mouse, all in church. Here's KHIZ's Scott Abel. St. Timothy's Episcopal Church was a site for the annual Blessing of the Animals Thursday in observance of St. Francis of Assisi Day. Numerous parishioners were on hand as Father Medler gave a blessing to their beloved pets. This event has been a tradition at St. Timothy's for over half a century. Every nine seconds, someone is a victim of domestic violence. The message from A Better Way is you are not alone. Friday night, the local chapter held a candlelight vigil to remember those who have suffered and some who've paid the ultimate price. On hand for this meeting and vigil were women and children who themselves suffered from domestic violence. A Better Way is available to help those who are being abused. 
as the population increases in the high desert, we do see numbers increasing as well. Um, generally, October through January are our very busiest months. If you or somebody you know is being abused, you can call the 24-hour hotline at 760-955-8723. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and you can notice little changes in the oh-so-usual. There wasn't a black and white checkered flag at this racing event. The flag was pink and black, and the call was ladies, start your in engines. <laughs> this was the all-women powder puff 20-mile race held near Tanger Mall in Barstow. It was the second annual breast cancer awareness race organized by more the Mojave off-road racing enthusiasts. Women were out in force to take on the rough course. My participation in this is really personal. I have lost both of my grandmothers from breast cancer. I've lost four aunts and I have two aunts who are currently, thank goodness, in remission. And so anything that I can do to help get rid of breast cancer, hopefully by the time my daughter's older, would be wonderful. All proceeds from this event will go to Cedar sinai Medical Center, a women's cancer research institute. Well, there are taffy pulls, there are tractor pulls, but have you ever heard of a plane pull? The Apple Valley Sun Devils took on the task of pulling a 160,000 pound DC-10 with a 125 foot rope. They were competing against the Orbis team. The fundraising event was sponsored by FedEx to raise funds for Orbis, a flying hospital, with a crew of 20 people and an operation and recovery room. Its mission is to fly worldwide, helping people with eye illness and training medical personnel in eye surgery. Towards the end of their stay, the local doctors are doing the operating and the transplants, and the volunteer visitor doctors are supervising. As the airplane leaves, Orbis donates all of the equipment that they have with them uh, to the countries, and Orbis maintains it. The teams did a commendable job moving the jumble jet several feet. The football players were rewarded with some pastries and a gift bag from Orbis, as well as a trophy of a DC-10 for their efforts. Recently, Victor Valley residents donated $145,000 to Orbis. Well, November 6th is Election Day in the Victor Valley, and this time there will be significant changes in the voting procedures. Due to discrepancy with the voting units in recent elections, the Attorney General has made a decision to suspend the use of the machine until further notice. We are hopeful that the Secretary of State working with our vendor, Sequoia Voting Systems, will come to a decision and that we will be allowed to use our voting system for future elections. At this time, we are going forward with paper at the polls, at least for this next election as well as the February and June election. However, one machine will be available for the visually impaired. There will be three more elections next year, with the final one being the presidential election in November. Officials hope that machines will be operational by then. All eligible voters are encouraged to get out there and vote. Saturday, thousands of spectators showed up at Southern California Logistics Airport to see the ultimate boy toy in action. The Urban Challenge was a week-long demonstration of robotic-controlled vehicles, or BOTS as they were called, taking on a 60-mile course of various challenges and obstacles. The performance was graded on a combination of errors and speed. These modified vehicles cruised down the streets and through the base housing of the former George Air Force Base while obeying all traffic laws, stopping at stop signs, and yielding to other robotic vehicles at four-way stops. There is nobody in the vehicle and there is no communication link with the vehicle. Once we press the start button, it is gone. And we just have to sit and, sit and see what happens. Department of Defense officials were present to observe the vehicles for possible military use. The total cost of one of the bots, including retrofitting, is around $250,000, give or take a few pennies. Well, this past Monday, local firefighters participated in helicopter rescue training in the cliffs above Kepler Ranch near Apple Valley. The event was a real cliffhanger, to say the least. Volunteers experienced dangling from a helicopter while attempting to pick up a simulated stranded victim. I want the citizens to show uh, the citizens of Victorville the capabilities of the urban search and rescue team. Uh, what we're doing is doing a uh, oversight cliff rescue and also a hoist rescue with CHP H80. Mountain climbing skills, skills were also practiced should a deep canyon rescue be necessary. This training is ongoing and is done on a monthly basis. 
In 1986, the Mall of Victor Valley opened its doors for the first time. Since that time, the Mall and Victor Valley have, gone, have undergone a lot of changes. Back in February of this year, a major facelift on the Mall began. The newly created Desert Oasis theme was presented at the grand reopening. A new fountain, some artwork, even an area for the kids in the food court with munchkin-sized tables embedded with grade school artwork are all part of the decor. The hard benches have been replaced with soft couches and some live music entertains the customers after a day of shopping. The reopening event ended with a spectacular fireworks show all this weekend. The mall is 600,000 square feet and has 96 stores.